This conference will <laughs> now be recorded. Good evening, everyone, uh, and good morning. You can join from uh, on so. Okay, so welcome uh, to the day two of cloud performance engineering in DevOps, where we have started our cloud journey. Uh, started with cloud computing. In the last few sessions, we went over understanding what is cloud, what do we mean by cloud, um, and we have looked into the AWS Cloud Console. Uh, we have uh, as well. We we will know what it is for and what we're gonna do. Um, these are the characteristics of cloud computing, as we have discussed. On-demand self-service. Why do we call on-demand self-service? Uh, can anyone tell me uh, why do we call on-demand self-service? Anyone? Uh, feel free. It's just let's be an interactive session. So that yeah, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you don't need to contact anyone. You can go to AWS or Azure to actually provision whatever you need. You don't need to contact any party. Right, on demand. So whenever we need it, uh, we can get it and self-service. You can get it. You don't need to approach anyone to create a server for you or resource any, any resources for you. That's why it's on demand self-service and virtualization and automation. If you want to look, understand what is this virtualization and automation, you want to look at the, any example automation, what they have done. As I have been said a lot, a, a lot many times, look at the cloud console, what they have done. In every service, in every service you observe, they, it's all about automation and it's trying to solve customer problem. They're trying to solve the customer burden of doing the maintenance activity and the customer only get to focus on the application deployment uh, and things like that. Um, the, all the maintenance and the repetitive activities, they have automated it. All the cloud service provider, not just AWS. Don't think I'm just only pledging it Blues. It's not like that. Uh, it's it's whatever I'm, uh, I'm mentioning about AWS is very much applicable to Azure and GCP as well. Okay. So moving forward, we have all understood to the advantages of cloud computing. Why do we need cloud computing over the advantages of cloud, cloud computing over on-premise, uh, setting up your own data centers, uh, and the problems solved by the cloud, right? Uh, these are the problems which solved by the cloud. What do we mean by scalability? Uh, anyone, uh, and elasticity. Uh, what, what does el elasticity exactly mean? Can anyone explain about that? You can read it and you can just explain in your own words. What does this elasticity mean? I, I have mentioned a lot many times that the cloud is elastic. Why do we say so? Uh, say so? Means we can uh, scale, scale in or scale out the storage space. If we need more, uh, more storage, we can uh, increase it in future. And uh, if we need less, we can decrease it. Right, so not just the storage, it also applicable to your compute. So if you're going to say storage, it only applicable to what you mean, uh, the, the storage services, right? So it's not just the storage part, or also the compute, your CPU, the RAM, uh, that part as well. Okay. So when you need the servers, you will get it, you will provision it. And when you don't need it back, uh, when, when you don't need it, you can get it back, you can just, uh, you can you can just remove from your uh, your infrastructure so that you'll be costing less so you'll not be incurring additional uh, the infrastructure cost right? that's what the elasticity means and that's what we will learn in auto scaling uh, when we uh, talk about this ec2 this instance this ec2 service that's that that's the feature which we'll talk about this auto scaling we will based on some certain criteria based on let's say if i know that for a certain duration of, of the day, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. or 1 p.m., I have the maximum user accessing my application. So what I can do, I can schedule more servers, more servers. So it could be storage as well. Uh, but when I say more servers, I mainly focus on the, the compute, the CPU and the RAM. So I can have more servers to accommodate, to, to service my additional user request, the load, and, and, and I'll be built additionally only for these three hours. So I'll be built as, as, as I use it. So pay as you go is what the cloud mean. 
you will pay as you go you will only be paying uh, for the compute that you use and for the compute time that you perform your application right so that's what the auto scaling is all about we will we'll discuss that in the subsequent uh, upcoming sessions right Okay, so uh, okay, can okay. So the other three service models. So we can leverage uh, cloud in these three ways: uh, software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure. Infrastructure as a service. Can anyone tell me what is platform as a service? What do we exactly do in platform as a service? And what we expect cloud service provider to do in platform as a service? Anyone? Deploy your code and. Uh get the infrastructure from the provider right and you as a customer i only focus on writing my code and deploying my code that's what as a customer i'll be focusing on i'll be least bothered about the underlying infrastructure the runtime environment what type of operating system they are using in the virtual machine i'm not bothered about those things i get the infrastructure from them i get the platform from the cloud service provider and i only spend time writing and deploying my code my application that's what the platform as a service means right and we all understood the the different service models the software service and the infrastructure service that we can also leverage where do we get the maximum control uh, in which service model we get the maximum control anyone in lands uh, in it will be infrastructure yeah. as a service exactly so in infrastructure service we get the maximum control so this is what i i mean when i say the control in infrastructure service the the customer uh, like you and me get the maximum control over your infrastructure that is why infrastructure as a service i get the control over the operating system i i that i get to decide the user get to decide the customer get to decide what operating system they need to use uh, ubuntu microsoft or a red hat or a mac os or depends on the customer database which database the data uh, the if if i have the control of the database obviously the data also right data i, I cannot risk hosting the data uh, and i just cannot rely on cloud service provider i don't trust enough so that they uh, data is more important to me because the, the, there are customers which i cannot uh, take any risk on that and the security of the data and everything and the application as well so here in the infrastructure as service i the users customer get the control over these aspects these components uh, whereas in platform as service i get only the control over the application the code uh, the that, that i'm writing and deploying right uh, in the software service i don't have any control over any of the components i just use software service and i pay uh, the cloud service provider for hosting that infrastructure and providing me the software right that's what i uh, the gmail the youtube do not charge you but no one knows google may start charging it someday right and then that day we don't want to uh, imagine right but they may charge uh, because they are maintaining everything the infrastructure and right? but google earns a lot of things on the ads a lot of revenue of google comes from ads and that's why they make use of uh, those services the youtube or uh, gmail and they are they are just offering for free so that to reach maximum people so that they can earn on the ads so yeah. okay so that's the side talk uh, examples of cloud computing service models so you can just take this example software service i have given enough examples so let's not complicate things uh, coming to the deployment model very important aspect uh, of the deployment model so there are four deployment models that we have uh, uh, the name to be named uh, private cloud community cloud public cloud and hybrid cloud let me start with the public cloud so if you know so the idea of cloud should be clear by this time i want when i say cloud i want you to imagine a data center which you do not own and what you're going to do you're going to leverage you are going to use few servers and you're going to pay for that that's what i want you to imagine cloud and a cloud console i want you to imagine as well so the self service this feeling uh, gets into your head right so when i say public cloud you me 
third person, fourth person, anyone, anyone can leverage the server, can use the server. When I showed you the data center picture, is there any limitation that only I will get the server share and you will not get, right? So those type of cloud where it is for the public use, anyone can get it. Uh, if you have the AWS Cloud Console, uh, you can very much go to even I can go to Mumbai region and I can leverage one server. Even you guys, you can go to Mumbai region and can leverage one, one different server. A third person can go. So those kind of cloud where anyone get to leverage the application, it's for the public, open public. That's called the public cloud simplest to be put simple that that the public cloud uh, private cloud uh, so if someone owns the data center itself someone owns the data center right so public cloud consider like a normal flight, okay normal flight you travel from different parts of the world right but but what happens is that normal flight everyone joins you right you're not alone in the flight Right, all sorts of people, all walks of all, everyone join uh, and everyone travels together. Right, so that's the example of public cloud. When I say private cloud, I want you to imagine a chartered plane where you own the flight, or at least that particular duration you own it, and you are alone going to travel. So that's the private cloud. When so at the, at the data center where no one else get to provision the service. Only you get to provision the, provision the server. That's the private cloud. Uh, obviously, those, those are costly and not everyone would do that, but there are companies who think that their security may get compromised if everyone else get to provision the server. I, anyone can hack into the application, something like that. It's like setting up your own data center itself, but they don't invest so much uh, they just ask someone who have who, who, who have already a data center they ask those person that i am going to use your complete data center and those are the examples of private cloud community cloud uh like i like, let's say one section of company let's say investment all the investment banking firms let's say jp morgan morgan stanley goldman sachs or uh, standard charter let's say all the investment banking firms with the similar agenda of the security right uh, all these or the pharmaceutical company of the world Pfizer uh, Merck you have big big right big big companies of the world uh, they all come came together and they host they, they own they purchase one data center completely and only they get to leverage the application for that data center those are called community cloud right? i'm just explaining the difference okay uh, cloud is all a cloud but who owns it that defines this deployment models so public cloud anyone can 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 leverage it private cloud uh, someone needs to own someone is owning the data center only, and only they get to the person get to the, that particular company gets to deploy the application uh, in that particular data center that's the private cloud community as i mentioned right uh, uh, the companies with similar agenda with similar goal uh, came together and they joined together and then they decided okay only they are going to deploy the application because their agenda their security uh, goals are the same uh, and uh, it's, it's quite secure because they want to share the burden of owning the data center right so those, those are examples of community cloud and when a company uses multiple cloud service providers more than one like it could be on-prem and one cloud mostly on one on-prem and one cloud those are the examples of hybrid cloud so uh, when a company uses their on-prem infrastructure along with a cloud service provider those are termed as hybrid cloud and what we have seen mostly, uh, this is like in more kind of a, a trending thing, hybrid cloud. Because what would happen is the company who, who owns their own data center on-prem infrastructure, they don't want to invest a more, setting up one more data center. So what they do, they uh, they contact one any one cloud service provider and they 
they use them as a, a backup or disaster recovery and things like that so these are the dif different definitions of deployment models and again uh, these this are all applicable to all the service models that we have um, uh, this could be software service to applicable to private cloud uh, or community cloud public cloud hybrid cloud a platform is, is platform as service is also applicable to all the deployment models infrastructure service is applicable to all the deployment models right so each deployment model is defined according to where the infrastructure for the environment is located right? so that's the simplest example so when you talk about cloud so these two two terms come one is called service model the how you will gonna leverage the cloud service provider and one is called deployment model and these are the deployment models that you have uh, we're gonna focus mostly on the public cloud aws is a public cloud public cloud service right uh, aws has some a private cloud as well where they reserve but we're gonna understand aws as a public cloud service provider that we're gonna do uh, and all the cloud service providers all the leading cloud service providers like Azure uh, and GCP, uh, uh, Google Cloud Platform, they are all public cloud service providers. There are other players also, uh, there are other players in the market who provides private cloud, uh, the community cloud uh, and hybrid cloud. If you own a data center on-prem, uh, you can have another cloud service provider, that's the hybrid cloud. So I think um, uh, everyone is, Google, anyone, any question on this particular slide, deployment model? So the straightforward definitions, just for things to know you. Yeah. All good? Okay, I'll take silence that we are good. Okay, so coming to the major cloud service providers. So, I mean, AWS, Azure, and GC, these are the major cloud service providers that we have today. Uh, uh, AWS captures more than 40%, around 40% of the market share. Uh, they are widely used. Uh, the region could be that they were quite early in the market back in 2008. Others were quite late in the market after five to six years, around 2013-14. These Azure and GCP came and they were the first one to capture the cloud market. Um, and they have most number of services as well, more, cus more customer centric, customer focused in AWS. They, they really want to solve the customer problem that's their main agenda uh, and they that's why they have the largest market share 40 percent around 40 percent of the market share followed by azure uh, having 20 percent and then gcp around eight to ten percent okay so this is like a uh, some old report uh, you can refer uh, the new report uh, market share you can just type type in google the market share cloud uh, market share uh, 2021 and you will get some uh, a lot of lot many links cloud wars are happening everyone is trying to beat other uh, that's the common common thing that they have uh, if aws is launching one service today um, um, i'm gonna show you one gartner report i just googled it i just found it a uh, very latest gartner report and what they saw, Gartner says worldwide uh, infrastructure service, public cloud service market grew. Okay, so that's the Amazon is having a revenue. Uh, just uh, they have a lot. So 40, 40.8 percent as of what June 2021. Okay, so that's the the latest market share. Microsoft 19.7, uh, Google six. So and others uh, so they are so you can just see they are these two are the main players like market share it's not like gcp is not used gcp is also good cloud service provider don't look at this number it's comparison to this but they also have a very huge profit the revenue 6.1 is also a huge number so yeah, that's that's about the latest market share okay uh again uh, this is a magic quadrant uh so you can see the you know, this is AWS is the leader and has always been the leader. Magic quadrant uh, from a very quite from quite some time. AWS is the leader there. Um, if you just look at 
today also if you just type magic quadrant uh, gartner gartner is one of the reliable uh, source uh, very authentic survey they they do uh, they you would you would not find any other uh, than this uh, again the aws is the leader uh, from 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 since the inception there is no denying the fact that okay yeah. again so coming back to aws so we're going to discuss our cloud journey through aws we will learn more and more about aws and how do we work how do we make use of cloud console is there any other way do we have command line option something like something like amazon cli to work and we're going to discuss a lot more about aws hence hence on till now i was just uh, talking in general about the cloud computing and benefits and things like that from now onwards i'm going to be very much specific to aws i, I keep on explaining the the different services that we have in for other cloud service providers like in azure and, G, uh, and gcp uh, for example if i uh, mention that if i have ec2 instance ec2 service so these are called services ec2 service and under the services uh, under the compute if you go you have ec2 service right uh, if, if i talk about the azure they call they call it virtual machine on the name changes, but all the functionality will remain the same. If I am going to provision a server here in a, in a particular fashion, uh, the, the UI would be different, obviously. It's a different cloud service provider. It's Microsoft, it's AWS, Amazon. So they call it virtual machines. But again, the concept why the functionality why is the same, but they call it um, the virtual machines, right? Um, and if I talk about GCP, they call it compute. Uh, so if I talk about the compute, they call it uh, GCP, they call it compute engine. So only the name changes, I'll talk about that in detail. And I have a, a list of chart, uh, which will which will have a very, very valid comparison between all the cloud service providers you have. Like in AWS, if you call it EC2, in Azure, they call it virtual machine, and uh, in GCP, they call it compute engine. Similarly, I don't want to go over this detail now. It's, it's not of any meaning. So when I explain a particular service, I'm going to talk about that particular service in other cloud service providers. So and it's it's all about you learning that uh, if 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 you know one and you know how things work in one of the cloud service provider, it's very easy to learn others because the core functionality is going to be the same. Only the UI part would be different and uh, very. Um, those things would be different. Like this is the GCP, right? If I if I ask you where do you where do you find compute engine, just type compute engine here. Um, every every cloud service provider has got a search bar. Like type compute engine, and the VM instance would launch up, and you can launch a VM instance the way uh, the uh, the way you launch in EC2 here. Launch instances. You follow you you give compute size. Uh, you search for you first give the ami name and same same thing of follow so that that would be our way going forward i'm gonna whenever i i'll talk about one service in aws i'm gonna talk about the other i'm gonna just mention about other uh for other clusters provide what they uh, name it and and the core functionality is gonna be the same okay so coming back to aws say so they launched in uh, you can see this 2006 2007 time quite early um, sqs s3 and ec2 these are the three aws services they launched they were launched with uh, they ended they were developing one infrastructure for their own website amazon.com that we all know the popular website that we have retail application uh, they were trying to set up an infrastructure for amazon.com and they 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 ended up getting uh, discovering that they can leverage these to everyone and that's why uh, it this got launched. This AWS console got launched, and and back in 2007. And today um, they just they 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 when they introduced it was just three services. To now today they have more than 200 plus services, and it's still growing. It's not like it's not growing. It's still growing. If you check after two years, it will be 250. Okay so uh, so that's how the cloud journey is happening and all are trying to be better uh, aws azure and gcp there are ma major players coming in 
uh, it needs a lot of investment to set up a data center, right? That that's when you get to use the servers and things like that, right? They have a lot of services. They need to invest a lot, uh, a lot of automation, lots of coding to provide a, you a self service. It's not that easy. So yeah, it takes time, and obviously they are doing very much well. Okay, so they launched in 2007, right? And currently, uh, the bigger players like Netflix, NASA, Airbnb, Dropbox, they all use AWS. Uh, the list is uh, very vast. Uh, the number of customers what AWS has, a very huge list. Uh, these are the quite uh, few popular names that you all know. We all know. Okay, so from here on, everyone is expected to get their AWS account created everyone can i get a poll on how many of you already have an aws account uh, we have 14 14 people joining joining here including me 15 out of uh, 14 how many of you already have the aws account so pradeep ready has Prem has dave has Hima, himadri babu has good rajesh he doesn't have prashanna doesn't have Vijay has it good. Uh, Visek has it. Sairam, no, you don't have it. Okay, so I think most what I have understood understood most of you have it. It's very easy. Okay, just go to Google. Very easy. So everyone is expected to do this. Okay, it's very simple to get an AWS ac account. We all have Gmail address, Gmail account, or any any uh, email address that we have. Just type AWS free tier, okay? And that's where we will learn, okay? I am expecting you to get a similar account like this so that when I show you something, I, I expect you to go and practice it. That's what I expect you. I don't expect you to practice in the class because we don't have that much of time, luxury, one hour. Um, I cannot let everyone uh, be with me and practice along with me. That's not practically possible. So I'm going to show you uh, how things are done and you're supposed to practice it later. So everyone is expected to have this AWS account for, to, to get the best of the experience and best of the learning. So just type in Google AWS free tier. That's what you need to type and you will be getting one uh, link uh, free and you're supposed to create an account here create a free account okay just type in the free tier okay uh, let me open uh, in uh, incognito window because if not my password would they would take my password and i will not be able to uh, proceed so just type aws free tier for the people uh, who um, who do not have this i'm explaining this very straightforward okay uh, create a free account and you will be asked a lot of simple questions your account about your details personal details with email address and things like that uh, then you will be asked for your credit card details uh, trust me they only charge you two rupees indian in indian inr2 um, inr um, inr2 that's all they charge even they return you that um, and it, they they just make sure that you are not a bot or not uh, uh, like uh, anyone who's trying to just unnecessarily create the AWS account, but they are going to create an AWS account and they give you 750 hours of uh, free a lot many free uh, things they have. You get to practice a lot many things, so they just make sure that you are a valid person, a genuine person who wants to learn AWS. 12 months of free, so they will uh, take your credit card details, uh, but you, they will not detect any money. I can vouch for that because I have been using that for a very long time and they have not taken, misused my card details many, in any time. Uh, you, even if you get billed, they will not charge money from your credit card. They, unless you don't make the payment, uh, they are not, you are, you are not going to get billed. So, so you can trust that I can vouch for that. So 12 months of free service that you get, 750 hours of EC2 instance, uh, 5 GB of S3, 750 hours of RDS relational database, you get it, 25 gig of DynamoDB, 1 million AWS Lambda, 
uh, 30 days of guard duty a lot lot many are free things that you get out of free tier so i request everyone uh, it's best if you all can have it and that's how uh, we will we will all learn together uh, and that's the best thing right so just get this and i expect everyone uh, to uh, get this okay free tier has a root account access as well as where the payments etc can be seen. what is that what is that there can you repeat your question i could not understand just wanted to understand if uh, free tier also have this access to see the payment structure and all i mean yesterday you were mentioning about root account or something okay when you log in when you log in when you sign up that's what the root account because you will be providing your email address that is that is that is the that is the root account that's your root account okay uh, so you you will always log in as that um, the one uh, so you will always let me just show you mm, yeah so that's that's the root account my root account so i just sign it using my root account uh, i'm going to talk i'll just forget forget things what i told about iem users i'm going to talk about that in uh, just don't don't get confused just log in that is the root account okay today yeah. i'll talk about iem user later so that's the root account and that's the free tier don't don't worry uh, that's the free tier yeah dev you good yeah thank you okay guys so everyone is expected to have this uh, okay uh, please um, uh, get this account created so that we all can learn together okay moving forward and end of it you will get uh, uh, upon activation you should see this screen once you have it means you can you have the access and you can log in to your um, root user account that's the email id you need to use and uh, then you can just cross check your, if if you're getting a screen like this everything is visible something like that means you have the access and you can create a play around your aws console okay so once you have this uh, uh, aws uh, account i'm going to tell you about a very important thing the first thing you would like to uh, i would like you to configure your root with the mfa okay i'm going to show you something there is something called mfa a multi factor authentication just to safeguard the root user because you don't want your root user to uh, get hacked or by any by any chance you don't want to lose your root access so what i will do you need to come to the root user and you know type on the security credentials and you need to come to the multi factor authentication and you need to enable it for now i am going to disable it okay i'm going to tell you how to enable it okay uh, now if i log out okay if i if i log out now and if i try to log in uh, it will not ask for my mfa uh, i have set up one mfa multi factor authentication with one device this this is my root user Okay, this is my root user. I, I can simply click on next, and I can uh, type the security check. They they do that to verify that you are not a hacker, or you are a genuine person. You are not a bot uh, working in there, trying to log into this. What is that? N three. Um, I'm bad at this. Sometimes it doesn't work for me. See, I was telling you. Let me just try it again. T H P S seven M. Okay, I hope this will work. Okay, yeah, this that worked, and I just password. So this there was no multi-factor authentication for me. They did not ask for MFA because I just disabled it. So what you need to do when you log into your root account, the same way that the when I did, you need to come to your this is here, and you need to come up come to security credentials, and you need to create one mfa okay make sure you have mfa enabled and i'm going to tell you how to do it you need to use your mobile uh, if you have iphone you can go to app store if you have android you can go to the market store and you need to search for this application okay uh, you can search along with me right now google authenticator okay 
google authenticator you need to have this there are multiple options i'm going to tell you there are multiple options you can use it but i'm using this google authenticator for quite some time so install in your mobile you need to install this application in your mobile for mfa uh, verification so what are you what what you need to do uh, come here now please uh, focus your attention here uh, you can download this later i've just asked you to download it google authenticator the name is google authenticator uh, let me just ping you the name so that um, i'm gonna put in the chat google authenticator okay and what you need to do you need to come to this your security credentials come on multi-factor authentication and activate mfa click on activate mfa and uh, there are a lot many devices you can use it so i, I, I can show you that uh, you have lot many options of using this. You can uh, do multi-factor authentication using a lot more options. Any one of these things you can use it. Uh, in Android, you have these many options. In iPhone, you have these many options. I have asked you to use Google Authenticator, the one I use it, but you can use any one of it. Okay, and there is uh, no such thing. Okay, uh, please install any one of these applications. I have asked you to install Google Authenticator. And once you do that, you need to use virtual MFA device. Okay, click on this guy, click on continue. And once you have it, that application in your mobile, you need to open that and you need to click on the plus symbol and you need to scan this QR code. Okay, I have scanned it. Okay, I've scanned this and I have got one token. After scanning, I have got one token. I'm going to type in it. Okay, it's happening real time, guys. Okay, I'm just doing it in front of you. And I'm waiting for that same um, thing to get refreshed. And I, because I need to type the second MFA code, which gets generated. It's getting generated in my mobile. I cannot show you my mobile, but it's happening. That's, I can tell you, and you can uh, do it on your own time. Uh, 0, 8, 3, 7, 2, 1. Okay, uh, it will keep on changing. Okay, so don't worry. Um, uh, I just closed it. Okay, and I have set this MFA. If I if I sign out now, I will tell you what is the use of it. If I sign out now and if I try to log into my AWS account, what happens? It will not let me log in without the MFA. That was a regular thing, the security check. That what happened. R seven W H six B. Right. Yeah, I can type in my password, which I have been uh, typing. And now I don't get to log in. Earlier I was get to log in, right? So now I need to type in one token, which is getting in my mobile. I'm I'm just looking, looking at my mobile and typing in and i can submit it now I, I get to log in so that is what called mfa uh, authentication so multi-factor authentication so even if your uh, G, your root address gets compromised so at least no one can get the access of your uh, cloud and no one can misuse it so that's the guarantee it provides right it makes your root account super safe right so Please get it uh, activated, uh, guys who have who, who already have the AWS account. It's quite easy for you, and they, and the persons, the people who do not have, please get the account created and do this step. Okay. okay moving forward, uh, I've just given you that. Uh, okay, when I talk to AWS, okay, a, any questions on this? Oh. I have a question regarding this. Uh, or uh, I have a question regarding this uh, Google auth Authenticator. So suppose if I have already installed, you know, uh, uh, this Authenticator in my uh, mobile with some different email ID. So can I, uh, you know, can I use it for, you know, for this as well? See, you need or... to scan it. So it, yeah, that is fine. Okay. That is totally fine. Uh, you just need to scan it and it will take it. Just to try to work it. It will, it should not matter. It should not matter. Okay, but I think it will. Uh, it will not check for the email ID for which with which we had uh, uh, registered. Not, nothing. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. Okay. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Just try to try to scan it, and it will work.
okay uh, moving forward okay guys so when i take when i talk aws region i have been talking about a lot many times you have heard me speak aws regions these are regions right uh, so what i want you to imagine when i speak a, about a region when i when you when i when i tell you that this is this region this is uh, ohio region right when i talk about this that i i I, I I'm here in this region, right? What I want you to imagine is this diagram. That there is more than one data center in Ohio region or in, in, in any other region. That is what I want you to imagine. I want you to imagine three data centers. I don't want you to imagine when I say a region, I don't want you. To, yes, I want you to imagine a country that for sure one country uh, but I also want you to imagine that there is a set of data center, not one, but more than one data centers, minimum two, max of six. So I've just given you most of the regions, AWS regions uh, has three data centers, three. Uh, and data centers are called AZ, availability zone. That is in my next slide. Uh, so when I say region, I want you to imagine this uh, a combination of three data centers or three AZs, okay? AZ1, AZ2, AZ3. Data center one, data center two, data center three. So AZs, okay? And there are three data centers in one uh, region, three AZs, okay? Uh, so for the, for this example, in Sydney, you have three uh, AZs. AZ A, AZ 2A, 2B, 2C. The name is something like that. AP South is 2A, AP South is 2B, AP South is 2C. Three data centers, three AZs. Okay. Think of an availability zone as a data center. The point is that these data centers, these AZs within a region, they are separate uh, from each other so that they are isolated from disaster. So if something happens, natural flood came or something earthquake happens or something happened, all the data centers should not get impacted. That is why they are located far from each other. Around 200 or 250 kilometers, around 150 miles apart, 150 to 200 miles apart, uh, they are. They, they need to be placed and they're connected with very high bandwidth and ultra low latency network. Very, very high bandwidth and ultra low latency network. Uh, so that uh, for the disaster recovery, uh, uh, so what I can do, I can set up one uh, load balancer here and I can set up two servers here, right? Uh, something like that. Uh, uh, so so I may, that's what I want you to imagine. Whenever I uh, talk about one infrastructure, I want you to imagine that this basic uh, setup, one load balancer, I want you to imagine and three uh, servers, three to multiple servers. I want that. That's what I want you to imagine. And these servers are in different different AZs. Uh, this is this this could be in AZ one. This could be in AZ. Sorry, let me just put a different thing. Uh, this 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 server could be in AZ one. Uh, and this this server is in AZ two. This server is in AZ three. Um, that's what I want you to imagine. Because, and this is load balancer. That's how it should be. Because let's say if something happens to one of the AZs, okay, this is the load balancer, okay. Uh, let's say something happens to one of the AZ. Uh, something happens to one of the AZ. Let's say this is, this is my AZ1, right, as I told you. Uh, this is my AZ1, this is my AZ2, and this is my AZ3. If something happens to one of the AZs, it, so I don't want, to experience the uh, users, your customers, that the server is down, your application is down. I don't want the users are going to hit the load balancers only. The users are going to hit this, okay, and uh, and they are, then the load balancer is going to distribute the traffic. That's what the load balancer job is to distribute the traffic, right? That is what the load balancer does to distribute the traffic, right? Uh, uh, distribute the traffic. Uh, the users are going to hit the load balancer. When you hit Amazon.com, what do you hit? Load balancer or the server? What do you think? 
anybody load load balancer it's balance. balancer yeah exactly you are not hitting the server directly you don't get the server access to the servers directly um, you hit the load balancer and because there are so many people they they hit the application they are not going to give you the application access directly you hit the load balancer and then the request gets distributed evenly but that's what i want you to imagine and these servers are in different different ages so that even if this is down let's say for some region if this is this is down it doesn't mean your application is uh, down right again the request can be served by the server which is in the other age that's what i want you to imagine um, and that's why they have this setup that's why they have this setup uh, multiple AZs in one region. That's the region they have this setup, so that you get the high availability. Right, your application is highly available. That's that's the uh, main main intention of the goal. Right, uh, coming to the global infrastructure. Um, earlier they had this website uh, with beautiful. Uh, uh, when I captured this, now they don't have it. They have removed this particular uh, it, they used to demonstrate a beautiful globe and it the this globe used to move uh, but now they have they don't have this in the infrastructure.aws if you go there they don't have this um, but they have this you can just in the aws so global infrastructure uh, you, you get to understand um, how many uh, az's they have how many regions they have in total let me just Talk about that. So uh, that's the uh, global infrastructure. They have 26 launch regions, 26 regions they are operating in. 84 AZs they have it. Uh, not just that, they have points of regions for the CDN content delivery network. They have 300, more than 310. Uh, they have they have lot. They they cover 245 countries and territories served. So the, the presence is used widely globally. They are um, so if you look at this blue, uh, this blue circles, these are the regions they have it uh, all across the globe. They have so many regions, and the the orange circles they, they that you're seeing is coming soon. They are planning to launch the regions. They are also plan uh, uh, planning to launch in Hyderabad uh, in coming days. Uh, in, in 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 Australia, Melbourne, they are trying to uh, launch it. In Spain, also they are trying to uh, launch, and in uh, also in uh, what is that region? I cannot Texas that or whatever. So they are, they are trying in Canada West as well. So their business is used. Um, that's what their global infrastructure looks like, right? Yeah. Uh, this is the old slide. Uh, uh, I've given you the latest one. I need to cut, cut, copy that from my slides. But to always refer this. Just type in Google um, "global AWS global infrastructure." You will, uh, you will get this page. Um, right. If I type, uh, I cannot show you that particular uh, infrastructure dot AWS. Let me just uh, check that if they have it up and running. Um, earlier they used to have it, but they removed. Yeah, they this 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 is that's the link. Uh, they it's direct to. Uh, yeah, they will just have the regions. Uh, they have they, they don't have that particular globe uh, picture. If you go to that, no, they don't have it. Okay, that's fine. Earlier they used to have it. Okay, so that's 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 all about the global infrastructure, right? Uh, right. Okay. So first thing first. Okay, let me tell you one thing, very important thing. Now I'm expecting everyone to get their account created by tomorrow. Um, please get it. It's very much required now. Uh, I'm going to tell you one very important thing that you need to set it up, and that is the. Okay, let me just. I have opened a lot many windows. Let me just. Okay. 
okay you see the first thing that you should do okay uh, set up your bill okay billing dashboard so because you don't want i don't want you to get charged and even if you're getting charged okay i want you to get the to receive the notifications okay so for that you always go to the first thing that you go i'm introducing one one more service called billing a service okay billing service you go to the billing service okay everything is all about service here ec2 is a service billing is a service i am everything is a service here what you need to do you need to you are expected to come here uh, you can see uh, that's that's what they have they have charged me uh, last month so it's very i'm going to make sure that you are not going to get billed okay if you follow uh, my instructions so go to billing preferences and check check or check these boxes okay and say preferences and you you give your email address here email address that's very important uh, i can type uh, here my email address okay um, this is my email address so i can type in here my email address and i can click on save preferences so that if if i'm ex if i am just exhausting my free tier i will get notification receive free tier usage alerts i will be receiving alerts uh, second thing what you can do you can go to the budgets billing preferences check these boxes uh second thing what you can do you can go to the budgets and set up a budget okay set up a budget i'm going to set up a budget for me i'm going to delete this budget existing budgets let me just delete it um okay set up a budget create budget okay and uh, set up this cost budget okay a uh, cost budget and click on next select this cost there are multiple budgets you can see your usage budget savings plan budget preservation budget type this cost budget click on next okay and uh, you you set up for monthly yeah monthly uh, daily budgets do not support enabling of our cash so, so set up this monthly budget and you enter a budget amount whatever whatever you think you can bear so much whatever for the demonstration purpose i am putting here one dollar they expect in dollars so just put one dollar i am putting one dollar as my budget this is my budget i am not going to spend any money more than one budget and if i can so just put one budget one dollar and you can click on budget name you can just type budget demo whatever any name you can give uh, click on next and you can give one threshold okay add and add a threshold here uh tell like if you exhaust 50 percent of the budgeted amount like 50 percent of the one dollar so 50 cents you will get you will receive a notification you would like to receive a notification here okay uh if you would like to receive a notification here uh you can also set this up and you can click on next okay and uh, you can uh, say next and you can just create a budget so that if you're exceeding even 0.5 you'll be notified 0.5 means 50 cents will be notified so do do this so you're getting two 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 type of emails one is for the free tier uh, in the billing preferences and one if you're exhausting the free tier so whatever you have budget you have set you'll be notified again that you have ex exhausted 50 cents uh, and uh, you are getting billed so take proper action and you will not and you at least you will you would know that if you okay so you you would know that okay you have missed out on turning off or setting down one server or few servers it's running at least you would you would you will come to know and you can um, set it down and things like that uh, things would not get unnoticed right so do this budget setup okay um uh, i'm gonna delete for my mind i have I, I don't want to get alerts uh it fills my email so uh, just do that setup okay don't delete it at the way i have done it but you just keep it with you now uh, okay so that that's all i wanted to cover today the billing dashboard that's very important and set up your um uh, mfa in the security credentials and uh, uh, and billing billing service these two things so those those these two are two asks uh, like assignment for you 
to set up your uh, MFA for your root account and uh, your billing dashboard. Now uh, set up your budget and billing preferences. These two things for tomorrow's session. Okay. So that's all I wanted to cover, guys. Uh, feel free to ask any question if you have. What Pradeep? What account? Mm -hmm. What is your question, uh, Pradeep? Uh, uh, budget is for the single account or the multiple accounts? Uh, if we have multiple accounts for a uh, companies, you know. Okay, that, that that's a complicated thing. We'll talk about that. Uh, just keep it simple for now. One account, one budget. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sure. We'll talk about that posting. AWS organization. There is a there is a service called organization. Okay. Uh, you can club multiple budgets and things like that. Uh, keep it just that those those are very complicated things. You, if you're working in a real company and where you get to work on many accounts, you own multiple accounts, then you can have one AWS organization and you can mention all the all your accounts and you will get a centralized billing. So just don't don't think about that right now. Just keep it. Just create at least for one account. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Any more questions, guys? No, sure. One small question. Uh, yeah, yeah, regarding yeah. this Google, is, is it okay you can send yeah. these recordings as soon as possible? Can we need to actually follow this and set up those stuff? We need those the recording very shortly. Uh, you are asking, okay, you can drop, you can talk to Mr. Kumar. Yeah, he will help you on that. Yeah. No, for the, I'm yes, talking about the recording, the one you're doing. You we need to see it. While we follow the recording, we can set up the, the account. That is what that's I'm what that that's what Mohammed I told you. Please reach out to Mr. Kumar. He will do that. The recording is not with me. It's it's, it's getting shared in the drive and in the cloud, and he has the access. Okay, it's not in my local. Yeah, and, and for the budget, um, are you charged according to the usage or according to the duration? Both, compute the compute size that we use and therefore the time you use you you are charged on both the things if you use a bigger server 8 view cpu 32 gb ram for 24 hours you will be different if you use two, uh, two one server with two vcpu and 4 gb ram for 24 hours the bill would be different right so it depends both on the compute size and the duration compute time and the storage that you, you consume lot many factors are there in the budget yeah? just create these things for now we'll talk about those things uh, in the in the subsequent yeah, sessions yeah. And, and the last one is it okay you can name those different slides because we need to be referencing this right in the long you run will get you, the can, you will you get can. the recording hello you will get the recordings Mohammed. And no, I'm, know. Saying, I'm saying you need to name them. You need to label them because in the long run, we can't go through the entire slides to look for a particular. Slide. I will do it. Well, let you. I will be sharing the slides with everyone. I will be sharing the slides. You just wait for some time. Uh, will it? It will be. Shared. You didn't. You didn't understand my question, sir. You need the slides, right? No, you need to name this slide to name it accordingly. Is each and every section supposed to be named? If you will, if we want to go to a particular section, we can just go by the name because the for reference, okay, recording. You want, okay, you meant that naming the recordings like this. Correct. This is this recording. That's this recording. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay, I understand your point. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Dave, you were asking yeah, something. Um... Yeah, I was about to ask now this Google Authenticator once we actually kind of set up this MFA, right? So by chance, if we lose the phone or something, is there any way to kind of recover that or? No, that's uh, difficult. That is, that is difficult. Thing. So make sure okay. you do not do not lose it. Yeah. Or else if you are, once we are changing the phone, probably we need to disable this current MFA and change the phone, right? If okay. the way the way I did, right? I went the MFA was set for me. Uh, the MFA was already set for me. What I did, I deleted the existing MFA and then I got gotcha. it from all over it. Same thing you have to do. Yeah. yeah, but losing means it will be a problem. Then it will be hard it to recover. Will be a problem. It will be a problem to log into your root account. Yes. You need to contact AWS support team to and you need to authenticate yourself, verify yours that it's you and they can they can help you on that. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, but so MFA is uh, MFA is not necessary. Okay, there's something called net, 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 but it's good that you have MFA. No one can hack your account. Yeah, I mean to say for security purpose, right? Exactly, exactly, exactly. See, okay, use thanks. any mobile. Use any mobile which you have it in your home, which you do not carry uh, outside. Uh, use it. Um, as simple as that. Use use those mobile. Right? Yeah. yeah, you 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 don't want to do that. MFA is very important data. Right? Token is coming there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, Roshan, uh, once the once the free uh, trial is over, so can we again uh, uh, renew that one or no? Okay. See, uh, you're talking about this AWS site. Right? See. Once the free trial is over, you will start getting billed. Uh, the okay. one, the, the way I'm, I'm getting billed currently. But again, you need to know how to save on that, how to make sure you don't get enough bills, right? So you need to make sure you don't have the servers up and running. And there are multiple ways you can reduce on that. So my trials are over. I'm using this for a very long time. So that's why you see these bills for me. Um, yeah. So that's not that much. Right, so there are multiple ways you can have uh, so that you don't get billed a uh, uh, lot. You need to look into these reports. Why you're getting billed? What can you do? If you're if you're the, see, if you're doing a business running 24 by 7, running big big applications, you will have to pay for that, right? Uh, but if okay. you're using for learning purpose, you will not ending up uh, spending a lot of money. Yeah. Okay, and we can also delete the account after the free free trial trial. Yeah, yeah, you can you can you can delete that yeah, very much. Okay. Okay. Um. All good. Okay. So thank you everyone for joining. Uh, meet you tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.